this one is working, we know, right? Isn't it always interesting when you have a speaker come up and they give them a mic and it's supposed to work, but it doesn't. Well, it is an honor to be here today. And, and Odie, thank you for sharing about... I was just going to use it to hammer on the podium. No, I'm just kidding. It, it's it's uh, great to be here. And I want to start by just apologizing. I, my wife and I moved back to South Carolina in 2007 from D.C. because we were tired of the traffic. I had no idea that all those other people were going to follow me back. I didn't know because when I arrived here, the traffic was certainly not as it is today. But even as we face traffic here in Lexington, I'll promise you, if you want to see traffic, go spend a few days in D.C. or in Atlanta or uh, Chicago, and you'll realize just how wonderful the traffic is here. When I first came back, I started at DJJ as a, the Department of Juvenile Justice as the HR director. And the first day on the job, we had a dusting of snow, maybe a little less than we had Sunday. And I'm sitting there in the office and, you know, I'm, first day, I'm going to be there early. I'm going to be the first one in and try to set the example. And I look around and 8 o'clock, I'm the only one there. 8.30, I'm the only one there. And the phone start ringing. Said, oh, I'm just not going to be able to make it. There's so much snow over here. And I said, are you living in the same place I'm living? Because I'm looking out the window and I don't see anything outside. So yeah, it's just about where, you, where your thinking comes from as it relates to weather and what you do. I, I don't like standing behind a podium. It's not what I do well. Even though when I was in the Air Force, they forced us to stand behind podiums and speak, I do like to get out and interact with the, the audience or as some of you may say, the congregation. I, I have been told that I often sound like a preacher. Well, I do preach a little bit every now and then, but it's because I have great passion about what I want to share with you today. And we got to do two things. One is you're going to have to listen real, real fast, or I'm going to have to cut the material to about one-tenth of what I normally share. Because this presentation today is really a four-and-a-half-hour presentation, and I'm going to do it in about 15 to 20 minutes. So, so get your get your running shoes on and get ready. So, and it's a, again, it's an honor to be with you today. Let me see if I can get this clicker to work, and we'll get moving here. So I have a. Hey, you don't need to know. That's me. That's all. Good. So leadership, leadership. All of you in this room are leaders today. I, 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 if you're not a leader, stand up. Good. I'm glad we all understand that we are all leaders. In fact. Well, you stood up. I mean, what's, what's that? <laughs> I, 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 I'm brokenhearted. I thought we were all leaders. We are all leaders. But leadership, leadership is nothing more than influence. And as we heard the presentation about Lexington Medical and the foundation, Lexington Medical Center is one of the biggest influences in our area. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yes, that's uh, when I say, wouldn't you agree with that? that I know it's early, yes, Jim. but yes is the answer. <laughs> so leadership is influence, and everything we do is about influence. If you interact with people, you are an influencer. Now, I know one really positive thing about this room. Everybody in here is an influencer in some way or another. Most of you, I believe, are positive influencers. There may be one or two that are on the other side of the fence, but I would doubt that. So today I just want to share a couple of things. Where do I aim? There we go. Goals for today. Simply to help you better understand influence and to increase your influence with others. Now, I can't do that in 20 minutes, but I can give you a 30,000 foot level look at what it means to be an influencer and how you can be a better influencer, how your organization can be a better influencer and how we as a community can better influence those around. You know, the last couple of months we've heard about how Lexington is going to grow exponentially over the next few years. Somebody's got to influence people to come here. Somebody's got to influence them to come to work for us. Who's going to do that? We are. 
And so to be that influence, so there's some things that we have to do to be better at it. And today I want to share just a few things with you. So we're going to start by doing a little influence inventory. And so how do you influence others? Think about that for a moment. Um, there are lots of ways. You showed up this morning when it would have been very easy with the rain and the cool air to pull the covers back over your head. You've made a positive influence by being here. So there are lots of ways that we do that. So there's, I hate these things. All right, there we go. There are other ways that we can influence people. Have you ever forced someone to deal with something? In 34 years in the military, I have forced a few people to do things. But that is not the best way to influence people. Although we find ourselves forcing, have you ever forced your kids to get out of bed in the morning? I force myself to get out of the bed. You know, and uh, so force, of course, is not one of the best ways to influence. <coughs> intimidation. Did anybody, any of you ever use intimidation to get, y'all notice the end missing off of that letter? Okay. All right. How about manipulating people to influence them? Gary Dees, do you manipulate people to buy your products? I thought you did. I mean, I knew you did. That's right. How about position? Probably the most common way people are influenced is by the position that you have. When I was in the Air Force, I had a whole bunch of stripes on my arms. Did I influence people by my position and by those structures? Of course I did. Is that the best way? Perhaps not. So what is a good way for us to influence people? How about exchanging ideas and thoughts? Would you say that's a good idea, a good way to do it, a good way to influence people? Of course it is. How about persuasion? Where you willingly accept someone's idea and y'all share thoughts and you are persuading people to follow you. Follow me, you know. I see a post on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and I say, click, I'm gonna follow that person because of persuasion. What about respect? I think everybody in this room has influence because of their respect. At least those of you that I know personally it's because of a high level of respect that people have for you. I was talking to Ted McGee before the presentation, and we were talking about his history and having the fact that he had talked with some great thought, think, uh, thought persons in the past and what they had meant to him in his career and how they impacted others out of respect. It is about respect. And that's the number one influence that we want to become is from respect. People respect Lexington County. Uh, people respect the leadership in Lexington County. People are respecting the Lexington Chamber for what they're doing to improve our community. So how many people do you influence? A crowd or just one person? We influence virtually everybody we come in contact with, either positively or negatively. It's your choice on how we do that. So as we think about influencing, I want to talk about four levels of influence that I think can help us become better people and persons of influence. And as we think about that, and as I said, leadership is influence. Our influence with others is usually not in all areas, so it's not everywhere that we're influences. We influence others comes with responsibility. My wife and I have a, a, a placard that we keep on our desk, and it says, I am responsible because I am the one who is responsible for my influence and what I do and how I impact other people. It doesn't matter what Gary Deese does, it's about what Jim Hatchell does and how I impact you. It's about what I do that impacts the community. It's about what I do to impact the organizations that I am. So I'm responsible. Gary's responsible for his 
actions. I'm responsible for mine. So we must take responsibility. We cannot blame others. My influence is either positive or negative, and we all know that there are people out there that we like to, I like to call them negaholics. Any of you ever experienced a negaholic? Of course we have. Be the positive influence. And when we can influence others, we will grow and they will grow, which is important because we want to grow those that are around us in influence. And as influence, we, we add value to other people. The, the levels of influence that I want to share with you this morning start with modeling. And modeling is simply that people of influence model the behavior that we want others to emulate. The need for integrity today is perhaps the greatest as it has ever been. And it is absolutely essential for anyone who desires to become a person of influence. In 2007, when I came back to South Carolina and went to work with the Department of Juvenile Justice, things were working absolutely fantastic. We had lots of money. We had all the resources we needed. We were doing lots of positive things at the agency and in the community to help our kids that were in need, in trouble. And in 2008, everybody knows what happened. The bottom fell out. The economy crashed. And perhaps one of the biggest things that happened that caused that was a lack of, or loss of, integrity. And we were influenced by some folks who made bad decisions in our banking industry, in our housing industry, and some of the other areas that had huge influences on us. And as a result, we all experienced the 2008-2009-10 11 and even today there are those who are still experiencing as while we have recovered greatly so as we are how did we get there okay motivated modeling so as we model the first thing we want to make sure we do is we have the correct integrity integrity first if you don't have high integrity then it doesn't matter what you model because people today, when you're thinking about the transparency that's so important, the first thing they want to know about is integrity. What's your integrity? Is it high integrity or no integrity? And it's always our choice. The second level is motivating. And the way we motivate people, you know, we motivated people differently in the military than we do in the private sector. We use the old brown shoe method, you know, Go, do, that's what we're here for. But as we are motivating people, we want to be able to nurture them, to help them become better at what they are, they're doing. And we do that through a nurturing process rather than by being bullies and hammering on people and using a sledgehammer to kill a fly when we should be using a fly swat. So we need to be more nurturing. We have to have faith in our people. You know, it's, it's difficult for us to lead others if we don't have faith in them. If you don't have faith in them, how much faith are they going to have in you? And how well are you going to be able to lead and influence people if you don't have faith in them? One of the things we often hear about is we got two ears and one mouth. Listen more than we speak. If you're not a listener, a good listener, if you're not listening to what people are telling you, you cannot influence them in a positive way. And we have to do everything we can to try to understand people and their circumstances. Everybody in this room has something different going on in their lives that you will never know. But we all have to try to understand. If we're going to be good motivators, if we're going to mentor, one of the greatest things about mentoring, the next level of, of influence is being able to mentor our people, our families, our communities. And when we're good mentors, we, mentors, we enlarge them. When I'm talking about enlarging, we help them grow. We help them become more than they are today. And it's about investing in you so you can invest in them. You cannot give what you do not have. 
And if you're not taking time to enlarge yourself so that you can enlarge your community, your people, and those that you influence, as part of a motivation and, and mentoring, is that we have to help people navigate. Show them the way. I heard Todd Carnes say something the other day that just was very impactful to me. We often tell people what to do, but we seldom show them how to do what we want them to do. So if we want to help people navigate to where they want to go, to become better influencers, then we need to show them the way. Good leaders show the way because they know the way. We connect with people. We empower people. We give people responsibility to do their jobs. We don't do it for them. It was one of the hardest things that I ever had to overcome as a recruiter in the military is not to do everything for my staff, that I had to let them go so that they could fail in their own way so that they could learn and grow. Empower people to go out and do what they need to do. Ah, uh, well. The last one is multiplying and the most important one. Multiplying is what we're all here to do. We want to multiply our ability to influence. And multiplying is simply becoming better at what you are so you can reproduce your influencing. And as influencers, we have to ask ourselves these questions. Are we leading ourselves well? Are we continually looking for good leaders? Are we looking for people that we can raise up to be good leaders in our community? Are we putting the team first? And are we committing ourselves to develop leaders or are we committing ourselves to develop followers? Influence. We are the influencers. We can make a difference in our community. We can make a difference in everything we do, whether it's at home, at work, at school, at play, if we become strong and powerful influencers. A few months ago, I got a letter from a gentleman that I had not seen or heard from in quite a few years. And in that letter, he said, I just want to thank you for presenting your 10 keys to success to our recruiting workshop in 1997. Now, that was a long time ago, but I wanted you to know that I have followed those 10 keys to success for my entire career. And I'm writing you today to tell you thank you, but I'm also writing you to tell you that I'm starting a new job today, and that job is the chief of recruiting operations for the Air National Guard. And that was the job that I held before I retired from the Air Force. I influenced that one young person, which I absolutely had no idea that I was influencing. You don't know who you're influencing. And I can tell you story after story about people that I touched as a recruiter that I had no idea how impactful my influence was on them. You're doing the same thing every day. And you're doing it in a positive way. And I'm excited that I'm a part of this chamber. And I'm excited that I'm a part of Lexington County. And I'm excited that I'm back in South Carolina, that I'm here and that I can serve you. There's a handout on your table. It talks about me a little bit. It's a fold, trifold. It talks about the the programs that I offer. I would love to have the opportunity to speak to you about some of those. One of the things that I really have great passion about, and one of the workshops that I offer is how to be a real success. Uh, you guys are already real successes, but there are hundreds of people out there today who are looking for ways to become successful. One of the workshops that I offer takes them through a very simple process that will help them grow and become the person of leadership 
that they need to be so that they can become the influencers of our community. Hey, I hope what I've shared with you has been important to you. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I look forward to sharing with you again. And Odie, thank you for allowing me to be here today. I got a question for Jim. Got all the answers. <laughs> I love it. This is the right. This is the right people to be around, right? They got all the answers. Thank y'all so much, Jim. One other thing too, I didn't want to confuse some of our awards and all that we announced a little bit earlier with our ambassador of the month versus our ambassador of the year. Um, Where's Heather Boyle? You hear somewhere? Heather, yeah, stand up, please. Uh, when we talk about people that contribute most to the chamber, Heather Corley was our ambassador of the year last year. So, I mean, you talk about garnering points and contributing to what the chamber does. We couldn't do it with the folks just like Heather. So, Heather, thank you very much for all you do. <laughs> Last but not least, um, we got some door prizes. If you'll see Sandra, she's got.